Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on African Confessions. The following story uh, it, that I am going to share with you, it was sent to me by one of our dear sister and this is the translation of that message that she sent to me. The translation reads like this, Hello brother Nashi, how are you? Can you please post my own story? as hidden identity so i just want to advise all those women that are staying or that are married to men that are involved in a lot of scams and fraud you need to know that it is good sometimes because the men will be giving you a lot of money but most of the times you are going to cry like i am doing right now when i came here to south africa brother nashi i then met my husband so when i met my husband he refused to tell me what kind of a job he was doing but brother nashi with time i then realized that my husband he was running this come it was him and his brothers they had been taught by this other guy who was from nigeria whom my husband used to be friends with but that guy he had made so much money so much that he saw that there was no need for him to be in south africa anymore he then returned back to his country so my husband he had been taught really well so what my husband used to do is that he would go on Facebook, on Marketplace, and then he would advertise. I heard you talking about a car. Buying a car, like on Facebook, this is like a no-no for me. It is quite dangerous because this is what my husband used to do. He would go there on Facebook, then he will advertise some car because they used to make some screenshots of the cars that they would see on other websites. Then they would place like a watermark so much that you would think that this is like legit my husband had a fake car sales garage so they will put a watermark on the picture of that car and my husband would even drive to the place where they will be selling the that car that you would want to sell and do is scam you would go there take some videos and take some pictures so you will approach my husband and after you would have approached my husband then he will start to send you the videos as well as the pictures so most of the people that he used to target they were from zim immediately when they would look at his name and the same name so you will feel very comfortable that ah this guy he is from zim so there is nothing bad that he's going to do to me and you Usually what he will say is that the moment that you will start to speak with him, then he will tell you that he is in a hurry. He is supposed to go either to the UK or he wants to, re to relocate back to Zim. So he will tell you that he wants to sell this car as quickly as possible. So most of the guys, they would be scammed because my husband will say that the reason as to why he is selling this car at a cheap price, it is because he is in a hurry. Sometimes he would lie that I am i am cheating on him so he just wants to sell this car without my knowledge so after you would have spoken with you my husband used this other charm there was this other traditional healers of his that you would go and visit there in venda but the guy was from zim this guy he was operating as a healer and sometimes he would operate as a pastor or as a red garment prophet it depends with you if you are a christian he will pray for you if you go to the red garment prophet church and if you are someone that goes to the red garment church you will do those go back to send the prayers for you and if you love traditional healers then you you will do the traditional stuff for you this is how he was operating so my husband was always given this other charms he had this other t-shirt in particular that he used to wear so this is the t so my husband whenever you will be speaking with these guys that he wanted to rob he had this other t-shirt of his that he had taken there to vendor that had been strengthened by that prophet traditional healer and if he would speak with you well you will be wearing that t-shirt so even if they said that you are someone that is really clever but the moment that you would talk to you wearing that t-shirt you will just agree to the deals that you'll be having with you so most of these guys you will tell them to send some petrol money and you will say that i am going to come to your province so that you i can show you the car but just give me some money and i am going to give you back the money 
and I need this money to fill up the tank. So most of the guys, they will be trusting him because of the spiritual powers that my husband had and he would be sent the money. So the money that he was being sent by all of these people, you won't even believe it, but we were able to pay for our rentals and we were staying at a very nice complex which was secured in a gated community. He was getting a lot of money and this was the first step of scamming you. So if he scammed you today, he will tell you that he is going to drive to your province. Then early in the morning, he will tell you that he has been arrested by the police. So this police that would have arrested him he used to operate with some South Africans just for the accent. Then those guys, they will speak with you and they will tell you that he, they have arrested your brother and they are also tracing you and then you need to pay them. So you end up sending more money on top of that money that you would have sent. And if the charms would have worked really good on you, you will even tell you to send a deposit. Most of the people, they will send a deposit for the car that they would not have seen physically, just some pictures on Facebook and on WhatsApp. That is how my husband was making a lot of money. So my husband then got arrested. The day that my husband was supposed to go to court, <clears throat> So my husband then got arrested. After my husband got arrested because of the money that he had left behind, I was able to get a good lawyer who was going to strike a good deal with the judge. But still the lawyer came to me and told me that the fraud that my husband had done, this was going to keep my husband in prison for at least a minimum of 15 years because he was looking at maybe somewhere around 50 to 60 years in prison so a minimum of 15 was going to be okay so brother nash i said 15 years that is just too much i then spoke with my brother-in-laws my husband's elder brothers and we had a meeting and one of my husband's elder brother then opted to return back to zim when he went to zim he went straight to chipping we had this other uncle of ours we had since gone to mutare when we were still very very young because he got married to this other woman who had been accused of bewitching him he then went there our uncle and when he went there that was when he was helped by our uncle's wife because our uncle's wife she had her own auntie who was a witch my husband's elder brother was taken there and then was given some charms so this charms brother nashi that he was given he was told that he was supposed to eat some peanuts so these peanuts they had been mixed with some herbs and they made him to go and poop and when he had gone to poop he was then told to pick up the poop using his own mouth so he had this other beanie head so he was told to pick up the poop with his mouth so after he had finished picking up the poop with his mouth then he was told to return back to our village to go to our father's grave and to speak with our father's spirit so that our father our father's spirit can follow him to south africa and he was told to dry that poop when he was returning back to south africa he had been told that he was supposed to take just a few pieces of that poop so my brother-in-law had these long dreadlocks so he took the poop and he inserted them into his dreadlocks and then he returned to south africa on the day when we were supposed to go to the court hearing for my husband my brother-in-law then gave me some of that poop as well as his other brother when we were inside the court the instruction was that it was really nasty but i did this to rescue my husband i was supposed to place it underneath my tongue the moment that the judge walked into the courtroom when she sat down that was when we took the poop and we lifted our tongues then we placed it underneath the tongue and it worked brother nashi just like that my husband was told that he had been granted free bail even those prosecuting officers they tried to fight with the judge because they were like this guy he does not even have a passport how can you grant someone bail that does not have documents but on that day, the judge that they thought they were talking to, she was not her normal self, but she was possessed by that spirit of my father-in-law. My father-in-law's spirit was there with us in court. 
so my husband was then released and then my husband ran away that is what happened my husband then returned back to zim but we don't know what happened we don't know if some of these people that he scammed maybe they also went to chipinge because there was one who used to call my husband and threaten him and say that one day one day i am going to chipinge and i am going to be with you my husband had to travel alone to zim because we were not supposed to travel in a group since he was running away so after my husband he had gone onto the bus when he was in zim that was when we also got onto the bus and we followed him the moment that i arrived at our compound my brother i saw my husband he was half naked he was just wearing that same t-shirt that he used to wear when he used to scam people and he was doing poop just in the middle of the compound the little kids from the village they were just laughing at him and when i went to the place where he was doing that poop this was like the biggest poop that i had ever seen in my life it was like my husband was now a factory of just producing this poop my husband was pooping like after each and every 30 minutes by the time that we got a healer that was powerful enough he said that we should prepare for the burial because the next day my husband was going to die we thought that the traditional healer was lying but the next day when my brother-in-laws went to that room where my husband was staying when they went to check up on him and to clean up the room that was when they found him just lying on top of the poop that he had just done like a few minutes earlier on when they went to that room where we were keeping him that was when they found my husband lying on top of the poop that he had just done your dear listeners right there was a message that was sent to me by our sister right there strange things do happen in this world yo